like I said, at the end of the last unit, phew, a lot of algebra. It's time now to take a small break and look at some physical meaning of all this algebra and equations that we've developed. Let's start back where we left off in the last unit, which is a pipe in which we have a compressible fluid flowing through with friction acting on it. We did all the painstaking algebra to come up with this Mach number differential equation, which is where we concluded the last time. Now I'd like to focus on what this mathematical expression is telling us. Okay, To do that, first, let me look at the right-hand side, which is 4 times f times dx over d. Now as we know, the friction coefficient f is a positive number, so is dx as well as d, which means the right-hand side is all positive. Okay, which means for the equation to be true, the left-hand side also needs to be positive. Let's first examine this collection of terms, all of which have the Mach number, as well as the ratio of specific heats gamma in it. Just so we know what we're talking about, I'm going to highlight those expressions. All right, so in that expression, if we start looking at the denominator first, we notice that we have a 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 times m squared. We know that the ratio of specific heats gamma is always greater than 1, which means gamma minus 1 is going to be positive. Also, m squared will be positive, which essentially means the first term in this parenthesis is a positive number. Similarly, gamma times m squared is also a positive number. Therefore, we've determined that the denominator of this highlighted expression is going to be a positive number. Let's now look at the numerator, 1 minus m squared. If we have subsonic flow in the pipe when m is less than 1, this means 1 minus m squared is going to be a positive number because m squared is also going to be less than 1. What does this mean? On the right hand side, we just said that the right hand side is a positive value. We've said everything else is positive, and we also determine that 1 minus m squared is positive, which means for this equation to satis be satisfied, dm squared also needs to be positive. Okay, which means that for subsonic flow starting at the pipe progressing downstream, dm squared is going to increase, or in other words, the Mach number of the flow is going to increase, which means the flow is accelerating. Following similar arguments for supersonic flow, where the Mach number at the start is going to be greater than 1, if we go back and follow the same arguments, we'll find that 1 minus m square is going to be negative in this case, which therefore means for the equation to hold, dm square will need to be negative. Or in other words, if you start out with supersonic flow in the pipe, that flow is going to slow down as it progresses downstream in the pipe. So we didn't do all the algebra and the math in vain. We are able to interpret just by looking at this differential equation and understand what the flow physics is going to look like downstream in the pipe. Now let's take it one more step forward. We just had the differential form of the equation previously, and we could understand the physical meaning from that. But what we really like is to have a final solution for flow with friction. To do that, we need to integrate this differential equation, which is in terms of the Mach number, applying the method of partial fractions. Now don't worry if you don't remember what that is. You can easily go back and look at some math references that we put out for this course to understand how to do that integration. For the moment, let us just go with the fact that we have integrated this and we have now a final expression which is all in terms of Mach number on the left hand side and the ratio of specific heat. And then on the right hand side far down there, we have an integral which goes from x1 to x2 4 times f times dx over d. 
Also notice that the final expression that we have in terms of Mach number needs to be evaluated at the starting Mach number M1 and Mach number M2 downstream. Okay, so now that we have the full solution, let us see if we can simplify this a bit further. First, I'm going to define a couple of useful expressions which will help me simplify this big equation in terms of Mach number and express it more succinctly. To do that, let me define the Fano function f of m, which is nothing but this entire expression put together here. I will also define an average friction coefficient f bar, which is 1 over x2 minus x1 times integral f dx over x1 to x2. Using these two definitions, I can rewrite the final solution in a much abbreviated form as f of m1 minus f of m2 equals 4 f bar x2 minus x1 divided by d. This becomes an easier expression to follow. I'm going to make arguments in just a moment similar to what we did with the differential equation to understand what is positive and what is negative. But before I do that, let me first provide a graphical image of what this solution is going to look like. To do that, let me plot this Fano function f of m as a function of the Mach number. Okay, when we plot this, we get this black curve that looks like this, in which to the right of this green dot, the flow will be supersonic. To the left of the green dot, the flow is subsonic. Let me start by examining what happens if the flow starts out being supersonic. Or in other words, let's pick a point, say this yellow dot on the supersonic side. Let's go back to the final solution and look at the right hand side. We see again that since x2 is downstream of x1, which implies x2 minus x1 is a positive number, f bar, which is the average friction coefficient is a positive number, so is d, therefore everything on the right hand side is positive. For this equation to hold true, what needs to happen is the left hand side should also compute out to be positive. We picked a point here, m1, on the supersonic side, and corresponding to that value of Mach number, there is a value for the Fano function as well. Now let's just conceptualize what the downstream Mach number M2 needs to be. We just said that the equation requires that the right hand side is positive, which means the difference in the Fano function at M1 minus the Fano function value at M2 also needs to be positive. Clearly, for that to happen, the only branch of this function where the Mach number allows for the Fano function value fm2 to be smaller than that at fm1 is in this branch. Therefore, we find that for supersonic flow, as you traverse downstream in the pipe, the Mach number will be smaller and smaller until eventually it reaches Mach 1, which is the lowest value that the Fano function can attain. At this condition, the flow is choked and we can go no further. Now, if we try to increase the length of the pipe beyond that, nature will make sure that some pressure waves and shock waves form upstream so as to change the inlet conditions to maintain this equality between the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the final solution. Similarly, if we start out with the point M1 on the subsonic side, making use of similar arguments, we'll find that the downstream Mach number M2 can only exist between this location and Mach 1, which essentially means that as we traverse downstream for a subsonic case, the flow will accelerate starting from this Mach number towards a Mach number equals 1. Therefore, we find when we make this plot that in both cases, whether we start out being supersonic or subsonic, as we increase the length of the pipe, as we tra travel further downstream, eventually the flow is going to choke at some point and the Mach number will reach Mach 1. This actually gives us a useful uh, comparison knowing that the flow is always going to reach 
the choked condition at some downstream location. It helps us rewrite all our expressions, all the flow variables with respect to that downstream location where the flow will choke. So let's assume that for a given starting condition, the location where the flow chokes downstream is at L star. And then I'm going to go ahead and set a few variables. In the previous solution, we can now set x2, which is the downstream location, to be L star, where the Mach number m2 will now be m star, which is equal to 1 since the flow is choked. We set the x1, the starting location, to be the current location, to be 0. And m1, which is the starting Mach number, to be equal to m. Substituting that into the final solution expression, we get this bracketed or this boxed equation. Right. Next, let's proceed trying to relate all the flow variables to the Mach number, much like what was done for isentropic flow and for the shock waves lectures. So the temperature ratio, T over T star, where T star stands for the temperature value at the location where the flow chokes and the Mach number is 1. T over T star can be rewritten as T over T naught divided by T star over T naught. And we're able to do this because the flow is adiabatic, meaning T naught is the same whether we are at location 1 or location 2. Therefore, we can directly apply the isentropic relations that you previously learned and rewrite this expression as 1 over 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square and similarly here 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 1 squared because the Mach number here is 1 and simplify that into this expression. Proceeding along the same lines, we are now going to develop an expression for p over p star where we first multiply and divide by gamma and then multiply the numerator by the density rho and divide by the density rho multiply the denominator by the density rho star, divide by the density rho star, where again, all the star quantities represent properties at the location where the flow is choked. We're then going to use the definition of the speed of sound and Mach number to identify that this expression is A square, this expression is A star square. And using mass continuity, we can rewrite rho over rho star as u star over u. Again, looking at this expression, I realize that u star over a star will give me m star. Likewise, u over a will give me m. And so I can rearrange everything and simplify as m star over m multiplied by a over a star. For the last piece, I'm going to reuse definition of speed of sound, which is square root of gamma rt, substitute for a and a star to get 1 over m, and of course m star equals 1 because that's the location where the flow is choked, 1 over m multiplied by square root of t over t star. Now we have already an expression for t over t star. The last piece is simply substituting that in here, which gives us 1 over m multiplied by this expression under the square root. Therefore, we managed to develop an expression for p over p star. Proceeding to the density ratio, we start out with rho over rho star, Look at the equation of state, substitute in here, get this equal to p over p star multiplied by t star over t. And then we now have an intermediate step in the previous expression where p over p star was 1 over m multiplied by square root of t, t over t star. We substitute that in and further simplify to get an expression which is rho over rho star equals 1 over m multiplied by square root of t star over t. Again, as before, we have an expression already for t over t star in terms of the Mach number. Once we get here, it's simply a matter of substituting that in to close out the expression for rho over rho star and express it in terms of the Mach number. Just as we've done all along for all other variables, let us also express the total pressure ratio p naught over p naught star in terms of the flow Mach number. To do this, we multiply and divide by static pressure p in the numerator, multiply and divide by static pressure p star in the denominator, where the star quantities again represent flow variable values where the flow chokes where Mach number equals 1. The next step is simply to use the stagnation pressure relationship of p naught to p and p naught star to p star and express it here along with the fact that we have an expression for p over p star that we just developed and multiply that over here. Now it's important to remember that this flow is not isentropic 
but we're able, able to use the stagnation pressure relationship which is an isentropic flow relation purely because of the definition of stagnation pressure which as you've learned earlier means if you take any flow and isentropically bring it to rest the pressure that you obtain is the stagnation pressure and therefore we're able to express P0 over P using this relationship. Certainly when friction acts on the flow the flow is not isentropic. This can be seen from the plots of uh, all the variables that we plotted so far, that we have obtained so far in terms of the Mach number. In particular let's focus on the blue line which is P0 over P0 star. Let's say we start on the supersonic side we know that because of the influence of friction the Mach number will be dropping as we travel down downstream into the pipe. Therefore as we go further into the pipe the Mach number is falling and corresponding to that we can also see that P0 over P0 star or the total pressure is also decreasing. Similarly if we were on the subsonic side we know that because of the influence of friction the Mach number will increase to the right here and we can see again from the blue curve that as this happens P0 over P0 star again decreases. Therefore, whether we start in the subsonic side or the supersonic side, as we go further down in the pipe with friction acting on the fluid, we will always incur a pressure loss in terms of the total stagnation pressure. This poses some design challenges. Let's look at what happens in the supersonic combustor or the scramjet engine in which the flow enters the combustor with supersonic speeds. Clearly, to mix and burn the fuel into this high speed supersonic flow we need, we need a certain length in the combustor and the longer the combustor the better it will be for mixing fuel into the into the flow. However we just understood that friction does something that we don't like that is reduce the total pressure of the flow and longer combustors essentially means more total pressure drop. Therefore it's clear that there's going to be a trade-off in terms of designing the, the combustor with two opposing effects that we need to take care of. One is achieving a high efficiency in terms of fuel and mixing and second reducing the pressure drop in terms of the influence of friction.